A lot of people think that other things make them the way they are. They will blame their past, they'll blame their parents, they'll blame the economy, they'll blame the Ayatollah, they'll blame somebody for things that are going wrong in their life. And one of the favorite things that we have to blame for why I'm upset at a particular moment is something called traffic. Traffic made me upset. And I've always reminded myself when I'm in a jam or when I'm on the freeway and I'm trying to get someplace, that traffic doesn't care that you have within you the opportunity in this moment to really work on these things that are perhaps debilitating or, or creating anxiety or stress in your life, that these are tests, these are opportunities for you. Traffic doesn't care. Your anger is your choice, and you can always choose to be, to be happy, angry, depressed, miserable, upset, or you can choose to be fulfilled and do something positive in this moment. It's always up to you. And if you can just give up your personal history, just like, just let the whole thing go and, and pay attention. And when it, when I th thought about that yesterday, I went for a swim, um, and, uh, which I do every day, but this was, uh, it was after doing this seminar with, uh, with Eckhart. And I, <clears throat> and I noticed that I was m more in the moment in that swim than any, any swim I've, I've done in the last several years. And I swim virtually every single day for, at sunset for about an hour. Um, in the ocean, and um, and I, I just <clears throat> I was I was in every stroke, and every t every t every time I would look down with the goggles on, I what whatever you see, whether you see fish or you see turtles or you just see, you know, rocks or trash or whatever it is that you see, it was like the it was um, it was almost like the transcendence of time and just getting past it and just really immersing yourself into that present moment and. And the second thing, of course, is in addition to paying attention, um, because as, as you pay attention, I mean, as I was swimming and I would look up, I would, I, I, I've done the same route for for years and years on Kanapali Beach here in Maui. <clears throat> I would look up and I, there was a tree, and it was I, I noticed there was a tree next to a building there that in probably 10 years of swimming, I've never seen that tree before. Uh, and I must have walked by it 10,000 times if I've not walked by it once. Uh, but I really never noticed the, uh, and I just, as I was swimming, I stopped swimming for a moment and I just became like one with this tree. And it's like, it was, uh, it was such a, a whole new experience. It was, uh, it was really very, very beautiful. And then the other thing is to be astonished, you know, to just stay in that state of being bewildered. Like Rumi said, sell your cleverness and purchase bewilderment. Just to be, ast be astonished at every breath you take, you know, be astonished at, uh, at, at who you are and that you're even alive that you were ever born and that that you're not this body that you're in and that you're this invisibleness and you know be astonished by the cloud formations and uh, you know and the little bugs and <clears throat> the spiders and the sand and, and virtually everything I had a great teacher that came into my life through his writing his name was Nisargadatta Maharaj lived in India up until the mid 1980s and he wrote something called I am that which was very powerful and influential in my life and one of the things that he talked about when he was asked the question what's the difference between say a saint or a highly functioning human being a spiritual master a spiritual teacher and the rest of us is that they have unconditional love in them and you don't or we don't and he said no he said Saints have unconditional love in them, and so do you. He said the difference between ordinary human awareness and higher awareness people is that they have nothing else inside of them. That's all they have. And it's almost like we have to learn how to get that in ourselves. To be able to, well, I always like to use a metaphor of an orange. I love the orange. Perhaps living in Florida is why, but... <laughs> An orange is a simple metaphor. You take this orange and you squeeze it as hard as you can squeeze it. And you ask yourself, what will come out? And what comes out when you squeeze an orange? Orange juice. Never, no matter how many times you squeeze it, will apple juice come out. There's no mistakes. You'll never get grapefruit juice out of this thing, ever. The only thing you'll ever get out of it is orange juice. And the next question is why? Why, when you squeeze an orange, as hard as you can squeeze it, does orange juice come out? And I asked that question up in Toronto one time, there was a little girl sitting right in the front row. She said, that's dumb. 
It's a, it, she said, that's what's inside. It has to come out. I said, well, that's the answer. <laughs> you are really smart. And she smiled and she thought that was great. But that's the truth. The reason that orange juice comes out when you squeeze it is because that's what's inside. Now you extend the metaphor and someone squeezes you. That is, someone says something about you that you don't like. Someone behaves towards you in a way that you find offensive. Somebody does something or says something to you that you feel hurt by. And out of you comes anger, hatred, bitterness, tension, fear, anxiety, stress. And immediately you say, the reason that comes out of me is because of how he said it, or the way that she said that, or because they did that. But the truth is, the reality is, that what comes out is what's inside. And if you don't like what's inside, you can change it. Now, if you ask me, how does orange juice get inside of an orange, I would say, I don't know. I can't figure it out. That's a mystery to me. I just enjoy the oranges of my life and give God the credit for that.